Good morning, church, and praise the Lord this wonderful, wonderful morning. And it is not only a morning, but also uh, our great Easter Sunday. Christ is risen today, so we celebrate and we are saying glory to God. We have Jesus with us, seated at the right hand of God, died and after three days, and a day like today, he is alive and we have every reason to say glory to Jesus. So maybe you are there in the house, you can avoid time just to celebrate, or I mean you can celebrate with somebody by waving, by being happy, by shouting because of the social distance, but we are not at distance with our Lord. I'm very excited this morning, and at that time I just want to welcome the praise and worship team to give us a number. Thank you, Brother Ngudu. This is your time. Ben Ngudu, come and just uh, uh, let's be a blessing in the presence of God. Thank you. Karibuni sana katika ibada leo. Tunawa karibisha katika kipindi hiki cha kumsifu Yesu. Tunachukua inafasi kukualika ukiwa pale nyumbani na familia yako. Tunajua imekuwa ni muda ambao tumekuwa nyumbani. Kini hata hivyo, Kristo anabaki kuwa mungu na tukuna kila sababu ya kumsifu. So tunakualika wakati dada yetu Elsie na tuangoza kwa hiki kipindi cha praise and worship. Ukiwa pale nyumbani, kama unaweza ukasimama, kama unaweza ukacheza, kama unaweza ukaruka. Kwa sababu tunajua kwa msalaba tumokolewa. Karibu sana, wa, kwa nini tusunganisha mikono yetu kumkaribisha dada yetu Elsie kwa hiki kipindi. Hallelujah. Amen. Tanza na wimbo Yesu alikufa kalvari kwa sababu yangu na wewe. Tupiga makofi pamoja twende pamoja. Mahali popote ulipo usimame umsifu Bwana Yesu. Maana ametuokoa, ametusaidia wakati kama huu. Makofi makofi Yesu ali kufa kalvari sababu ya dhambi zangu zote hiyo hiyo kalvari hiyo kalvari yo ali kufa Yesu ali kufa kalvari sababu sababu ya dhambi zangu zote hiyo hiyo kalvari hiyo kalvari Yesu 
alikufa kalvari Sababu, sababu ya dhambi zangu zote oh, Hiyo, hiyo kalvari Hiyo, hiyo kalvari Hiyo, 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 hiyo Kalvari Sababu ya dhambi zangu zote Hiyo, hiyo Kalvari Hiyo, Kalvari Hiyo, alikufa Yesu, alikufa Kalvari Sababu, sababu ya dhambi zangu zote Oh, hiyo, hiyo Kalvari Hiyo, hiyo Kalvari Sababu, sababu ya dhambi zangu zote Oh, hiyo, hiyo kalvari Hiyo, hiyo kalvari Thank you Jesus for dying on the cross for our sins Oh Lord, we exalt you this day We lift your holy name, Jesus Lord, you deserve all the glory and all the honor Lord, may you cover us with your blood this trying time, oh Lord. Keep diseases away from us, Jesus. May we enjoy your presence. May we enjoy your joy, Jehovah. May we exalt your holy name in the trying times. And in the good times, Jehovah, be lifted high. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift your hands and worship as we exalt your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands and worship. As we exalt your holy name, you deserve, you deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship. We exalt your holy name. You deserve the glory. Exalt your holy name For you are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you For you are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you not like you Jesus the things that you do no one else can do I thank you because before you there is no small and big miracle the things that you do are great we can compare you to none Lord you do things even that which we've not been able to ask 
you do them and you've done them for us Lord and for that Lord we lift you and we worship you and we bless you receive honor and glory here on earth and in heaven for you deserve all this is our prayer in Jesus name Amen, Amen. He's a great God the things that he does no one else can and we want to invite you as we continue to worship that you join us in this hymn, Nataka tu ni mjue Yesu, zaidi na zaidi. If there is any prayer, if there is any desire, I don't think there is any that surpasses this one, the desire to know the Lord. More and more to know the Lord. Nijue ili pendo lake ambalo alitoonyesha hata kwa wakati wa kushinda kifo ni kwa sababu ya pendo. Nataka ni mjue Yesu na nizidi kumfahamu. desire is to see the one and to know that one who died for us and a day like this resurrected with victory over death for our own victory why don't you join us in celebrating this Jesus this morning wakati tunapoendelea wakati tunaendelea kushangilia wacha niwalike mabalozi kwa ya pia 
wakaweze kutubariki wakati wa namsifu Kristo na wimbo mmoja na wewe ukiwa pale nyumbani endelea kubarikiwa pamoja nasi na usitoke hapo maana neno linakujia wakati usio kuwa mrefu Bwana Yesu awabariki Thank you very much for such a powerful Oh, praise and worship uh, I am sure the Lord is smiling at us and I am very happy because we are in the presence of God how awesome it is to be in the presence of God and at this time Lord we we just want to uh, hear a song from the hill voices uh, so I welcome the hill voices to to give a number and after that we are going to have uh, Reverend Kirwa Uh, come and give us the intercessory prayer and from there we shall continue god bless us thank you Thank you, Hill Voices. This is wonderful. It's a tremendous day that we are before the Lord. We want to bring ourselves before Him in prayer. And uh, while at home, through this virtual correspondence, allow me to pray with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are an awesome God. You have led us through one day to the other. And we have come to a day, Lord, of celebration. We come before you, Lord, with hearts full of thanksgiving, irrespective of the situation and a point where we are, Lord. We want to seek for your guidance. We want to pray that you fill the gaps in our hearts, Lord. We want to ask you, Lord, to minister unto us differently, Lord, We want to pray for this country, for the leadership of this nation, for the leadership of, of the world, 
and our spiritual leaders, Lord. We commit them before your able hands. We want to pray for the families that are affected. We want to ask you, Lord, to minister unto them greatly, Lord, that they may come out of this celebrating that, Lord, you are with them. We want to pray for this wonderful church, even for them that are at home. We want to seek for your face at this time, Lord, this time of isolation, this time of, of coronavirus. We want to seek for your face, Lord Jesus. There are those of us who are on the front line that are taking care of these brethren and sisters, brothers who are in hospital. Lord, take care of them. We want to pray even for them that are at home. Some that cannot move because of different infirmities, Lord. With you, we have the assurance that you can bring everything to normalcy. Heal them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Even for your church, as we celebrate this day, the day that you ministered unto us resurrection, the day that we are prepared for a new dawn, we seek for your face and trust you in every step that we are going to make. We ask you, Lord, to be with us. This nation belongs to you. We are your people. And we have a name, Lord, before you, Lord. That, Lord, you are our refuge. You are our fortress. We continue seeking you, Lord. We continue praying you, Lord, to you, Lord. And we continue asking that, Lord, you minister greatly unto us. Lord, for those who have difficulties in movement, wherever they are, Lord, bless them. Change their situation, Lord. And before our time, we will realize that you are still in the throne. We thank you and bless you. Because in Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you. We now welcome the Hill Voices. And after the Hill Voices, Reverend Okeo will be ready to read us the word of the day. Welcome. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. And the Lord shall bear my spirit home and the Lord shall bear my spirit home. He rose, he rose, he rose, he from the dead. He rose, he rose, he rose, he rose, he rose from the dead. He rose, he rose, he rose, he rose, he rose from the dead. And the Lord shall bear my spirit home and the Lord shall from the dead. 
Thank you very much, Reverend Kirwa. I will ask us to open our Bibles to the book of Luke, Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, from verses 1 to 7. Luke, chapter 24, from verses 1 to 7. And I will read. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gloomed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The son of man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful men. Be crucified on the third day, be raised again. That's the word of the Lord. Allow me now to welcome our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Mairori, to share with us the word of the Lord. Happy Easter, everybody. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is risen. Yes, indeed, he is risen. It's a joy for me to join you today through our online platform and also through our Truth FM 90.7 and the BHP. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the hope of Easter as we celebrate what God has done for us. But before we get there to celebrate and to thank God for Easter, I'd like to take us through the experience from Friday through Saturday, and then we'll come to Sunday. Now, during this time of COVID-19, we've seen people go through the emotions of pain, agony, suffering, despair, confusion, and doubt. We've also seen those who have been healed or, or those that have been actually discharged celebrate with their families and friends. They have come out victorious. Now, these emotions are not limited only to such a times as this when we have the COVID-19, but we go through them in our daily lives. The key issue is that are we prepared when these emotions strike us? Do we have a proper perspective on how to deal with these emotions? Jesus actually went through these emotions. He went through pain. He went through the emotions of despair, confusion, doubt. But he was prepared and he knew how to deal with them. And I'd like to share with us today, as we celebrate the Easter, and as we conscious of what we are going through as a nation, that the Lord is there to walk us through these challenges that come in life. We begin with the Good Friday. The Good Friday, Jesus was physically whipped. He went, he was conned, they spit on him. His disciples actually rejected him. Spiritually, he took the sins of the whole world upon himself. That was a day of pain. That was a day of agony. That was a day of rejection. That was a day of suffering for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How did Jesus respond to this moment, to this Friday? How did he respond? In actually Luke 22, verses 42, the Bible tells us that he reached out to God in prayer. He knew where to direct his pain. He knew who to run to in times of difficulty. In fact, in verses 42 it says, actually I'll begin with verses 41, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. 
And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus poured his heart to God during this painful time. I want to encourage us all. We may be going through pain. We may be going through frustration. We may be going through rejection. We may be going through suffering. I want to encourage you, pour your heart to God. In fact, Jesus tells God, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. Take this cup from me, away from me. It is not wrong to babble before God, to tell him what is in your heart. The pain that you are going through, it is okay. Jesus teaches us that. We acknowledge that he is God the Father. He is able, we tell him what is in our heart. The second thing we do is let us trust God at this moment. He says, nonetheless, even if my request is to take this cup away, I'm saying, let your will be done. Totally trust God that whatever I'm going through, he is in charge. God will see me through. For those of you that are going through difficulty this time, through the pain, I pray that our God will be your refuge. I pray that God will draw closer to you and you will pour your heart to God and he will answer you. On Saturday, after Christ had been, actually on Friday evening, of course, they crucified Christ. Now came the Saturday when all the hopes of the disciples were lost. They actually had been with Christ, had seen him raise the dead. They had seen him calm the seas. They had seen him uh, uh, heal the blind. They had seen him do great miracles, feed thousands of people. And now their savior is gone. He's literally dead. So Saturday was a day of major confusion, despair, and doubt. I'm sure most of them were locking themselves in their house saying, now it is done. All that we thought was our hope is all gone. Our Savior is no more. You know, this story can be best illustrated by the story in John chapter 11, the story of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. They lived in a village called Bethany. It's interesting that Lazarus became sick. And in, in uh, verses uh, 2, actually 3, therefore the sisters sent to him, that is to Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. And then Listen to the response from Christ. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, and that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then, after this, he let us say to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. Now, Lazarus becomes sick, and the Bible tells us this was a person that Jesus loved. He loved this family dearly. And he gets the message that your friend is sick, and he decides to stay two more days, not in a hurry. And back at home, things are getting worse. The sickness is getting bad. I'm sure in the hearts of Martha and Mary, they were going through despair. And they were wondering, does really Jesus love us? But the beauty of it is this. In verses 3, they had actually sent a word to Jesus. In other words, they had prayed. They had requested, Lord, you've seen the state of our brother. He is sick. 
And the answer was very clear. Jesus had the prayer. Jesus had the prayer. Friends, sometimes we take our prayers to God and we do not know whether he has heard us. The message from this verse is that God hears prayer. He may not act immediately the way we want, but he has heard our prayer. In fact, as we had said earlier, he actually had answered and said, this sickness is not under death, which means he had looked at it and he knew the situation that Lazarus was in. But back with Martha and Mary, they knew everything is gone. They were beginning to doubt and say, now God doesn't love us anymore. Now we don't know what will happen. Our only brother Lazarus is gone. What will life be after this? During this time of COVID-19, people are wondering if God has heard our prayers. I want to tell us, yes, he has heard our prayers. We've prayed as a nation. We've prayed as a church. You've prayed as a family. God has heard our prayers. God has heard our prayers. The answers may delay a little bit, but God knows the situation. God knows the situation. And at this time, we don't doubt him. Let us trust him that he will come through for us because he is God and he understands and we've given him our prayer. We've taken our prayer uh, before him. Now, yes, it took a long time, two days. But even after that, the journey was long. <laughs> and he arrives at the home four days after he had been buried, after, he, after Lazarus had been buried for four days. So when Martha heard that Jesus had come, she ran to him and said, Lord, if you are here, my brother would have not died. She knew very well the power of God. She knew very well the power of Christ, that Christ would heal. She knew that his presence would make a difference. And they have the conversation with Christ. And later, she goes and tells her sister Mary that the Savior is here. And Mary comes, pours herself fully to the Lord, and she cries before him. And Jesus acts. I'll read a few of those verses. It says, Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. For even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give to you. Praise the Lord. That is an amazing faith. She knew who Christ was. And even in this time of difficulty, she still believed that God would do something. Even after the death, he says, whatever you ask of God, he will do. Because she knew who Jesus is. Church, during times of doubt, during times of confusion, during times of despair, let's not doubt our God. He remains the same. And he will reach out to us. He will, he will heal us. He will do what only God can do in our lives. And then Jesus tells her, your brother will rise again. So after Mary was told, verses 45 says, Then many of the Jews who had come with Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed him. But just before that, in verses 43, it says, Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, hand, hand, uh, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with cloth, 
Jesus said to them, Lose him and let him go. We praise our God that he is never let. He is never let. During times of confusion, like the times that the disciples went through after their Savior had been crucified and he had been buried, we want to keep the faith that God will do a miracle. In those dark times, God will show himself. God showed himself to Mary and Martha and he raised Lazarus. He raised Lazarus back to life. Now, think of yourself. You are this disciple of Jesus. Friday passed, you saw what happened. Here is Saturday and it is dark. It is totally dark. You don't know what will happen. Actually, your hopes are gone. And you are now saying it's the end of the world. During dark times, do not doubt what God told you in the light. His word will remain true. Some of you, some of us, all of us go through this in life. We have those moments that things are dark. You've been praying for a marriage and it's going down. You have a family member that is going through difficulty. And you don't know what will happen. You don't know whether God will show up. You've been praying and are not sure, is God hearing my prayer? You got a job that was doing very well and in a very short time you are fired. You are saying, God, where is my future? Does God still love me? Does God still hear me? Probably he's just still staying two more days. Or it may be four days after you feel this thing is dead. But God is a God of resurrection. Our God is a God of life. He brings dead things to life. He brought Lazarus back to life. This was the message the disciples needed that Saturday to know that Jesus had actually told them that he will go through this and on the third day he will raise. On the third day he will be up. They had forgotten and they had taken things in their own human perspective. My prayer for us today is as we go through the dark times of life, Let's remember the promises that God has told us in his word. His promises are yes and amen. Actually, in, uh, in Isaiah 43, I'll read a few of these verses. It says, 43, one says, But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt to your ransom. Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Praise the Lord. We have a God who is ready to walk with us through those times of doubt, of fear. He's there to help us and he says nothing will happen to you during those days. The disciples needed to be reminded that. But God had to remind them in a very powerful way. Because when Sunday came, things changed for them. When Sunday came, things changed for the disciples. I want to tell each one of us who is listening to us today that you may go through a Friday, you may go through a Saturday in life, but I have good news for you. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. And things will change. Don't get stuck and finish your life and say, I'm done on a Saturday. Just if you are patient a little bit, one more day, God is going to do a miracle in your life. 
on Sunday morning, something happens that is great. The ladies, the Bible says, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women, when they came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared, but they found a stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it had happened as it were greatly, and it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this. And behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bore their faces, faces to, the, to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he spoke to you. Praise God. That is the good news of Sunday. That the situation is not the same. It has changed. Where you thought things were, they are no longer there. It has changed. Where the disciples had thought their hopes were dashed, their hopes now came back to life because our Lord Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He rose on the third day as he had says. Friends, there is hope that Easter brings. The first hope is that I would like all of us to have is Jesus is always victorious. He will give us victory. He will give us victory. After Jesus, after the ladies found out that Jesus has risen, and they were told by the angels, they ran, met the disciples, told them they were all astonished, perplexed, they were not sure what was happening. Peter ran and came and confirmed, yes, truly, he's no longer in the tomb. After that, the Bible records in Luke that they were two walking on the road to Emmaus, and they were walking with somebody they did not know. And later in the evening, as they broke bread together, they realized, their eyes were open, they realized it was the Messiah. And they were astonished when they wanted to celebrate, Jesus vanished. <laughs> and those two ran and told the other 11, said, yes, we have seen him. He was with us. And while they were talking, Jesus appears to them and encourages them. He tells them these words, peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Praise be to God. So Jesus, after being raised for 40 days, he appeared to various groups of people, telling them, giving them hope that death is not the end. That death is not the end. What human beings in general fear is death because that brings your dreams to an end. It brings your life to an end. But Jesus is bringing us good news this Easter that death is not the end of life. It's actually the beginning of life and life eternal. It's, it, it's the beginning of another life forever and ever with God. And so when death comes our way, we shouldn't even fear. I told my friends, that is the eventual thing that will happen to everyone else. But Jesus has already prepared the way and given us victory over death. So that when it comes, we know that we shall rise. He says in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. So therefore, never fear anymore. Death. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 15, actually 50, from 55 of 1 Corinthians, the Bible records and says, Oh, death, where is your sting? 
And then in 57 he says, We thank God for he has given us victory through Christ. For even if we were to die physically, we will be raised by Christ. You enter into the heavenly home. Paul says, I desire I'm torn between whether to be here or to be with the Lord. Because, friends, life is meant to be a test. It is for a short time. We may go through our Fridays, our Saturdays, and Sunday will come. But even if that Sunday were to come and we rejoice, we will still reach the end of this, of this life. Lazarus had to die again. But Jesus is giving us a very powerful message here. He says, there is life after death. Yes, I will give you victory in your life now. But after death, there is life. And you shouldn't fear death at all. And therefore, knowing that, Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Church, the resurrection of Christ brought great hope to this world. That is why as a church we can meet on Sunday and celebrate and say yes. We are meeting to celebrate the victory that Jesus brought. Because we do not fear any more death. We do not fear life for Christ has conquered for us life and he has conquered death. He has given us life and he has given us victory for the future. As we celebrate this Easter, amidst this cloud of COVID-19, my prayer is you will feel the presence of Christ, that he will walk with you. Do not let doubt, fear, pain rule in your life. Allow the resurrected Christ to rule in your life. He sees the past, he sees the future. He has your past, he has your future. He understands your life and he loves you deeply. He cares for you. Ours is just to surrender and say, Lord, you fought for us. You've given us life and so we give our lives to you and we want to celebrate because it is Easter. Church, he is risen, he is alive. Let us celebrate Jesus for he is alive with us. We give him the praise now. We thank you, Jesus, for you are alive. We thank you that you've given us victory, and we thank you that you've conquered death. May we live with that victory in our lives, for it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend, for the wonderful message. Indeed, the tomb is empty. Christ is risen. And we're so glad that even at this moment, we can still rejoice because the tomb is empty. It is now time for us to give to the Lord, and I want to invite us all to give to the Lord through our payable number 809-109. And as we do that, Please, I will invite the Mabalozi Choir to bless us as we celebrate the Lord. Remember, we are giving through the pay bill, church pay bill, that is 809-109. And the account, you can say if it is tithe, if it is thanksgiving, if it is, if it is offering. I welcome you both to share in this for the glory and honor of your name. Thank you. Mabalosi will be able to bless us. Nani, 
na mkono wa Bwana amefunuliwa nani nani maana alikuwa mbele zake kama mche mororo na kama mzizi katika inji kavu na kama mzizi katika inji kavu yeye ana umbo wa la uzuri atumwona po atatum tamani yeye ana umbo wa la uzuri atumwona po atatum tamani alidharauliwa na kukataliwa na watu mtu wa uzuni nyingi atuae sikitiko alidharauliwa kukataliwa na watu mtu wa uzuni nyingi atuae sikitiko hakika ameachukua masikitiko yetu ametuika uzuni zetu hakika ameachukua masikitiko yetu Ametuika uzuni zetu Lakini tulimdania ya kuwa amepigwa na Mungu na kuteswa kwa makosa yetu alitubuliwa kwa maovu yetu lakini tulimdania ya kuwa amepigwa na Mungu na kuteswa bali alijeruhiwa kwa makosa yetu alitubuliwa kwa maovu yetu adhabu ya amani yetu kwa kesi si tumepona tumepona adabu ya amani yetu ilikuwa juu yake na kwa kupigwa kwa kesi si tumepona tumepona hali dharauliwa na kukataliwa na watu mtu wa uzuni nyingi atuae sikitiko hali dharauliwa na kukataliwa na watu mtu wa uzuni nyingi atuae sikitiko kita meachukua basi kitiko yetu ametuika uzuni zetu hakika ameachukua basi kitiko yetu ametuika uzuni zetu Alidharauliwa na kukataliwa na watu Mtu wa uzuni nyingi atuae sikitiko Alidharauliwa na kukataliwa na watu Mtu wa uzuni nyingi Aduae sikitiko Hakika ameachukua 
basi kitiko yetu ametuika huzuni zetu katika ameachukua basi kitiko yetu ametuika huzuni zetu Thank you Mabalosi for blessing us and I want us to bring this service to close and we thank God for blessing us and I will just want to ask us to pray together and then we will share in the grace. Lord we thank you for blessing us this day. We thank you King of Glory that you have reminded us that you have risen. Thank you for filling our heart. I pray that Lord you will continue to bless us and to give us joy and to give us peace especially this time king of glory thank you for allowing us to worship you even through our giving lord i pray that you will bless each one of us who have given for your work thank you and i bless your name for in jesus name i pray amen and now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen I'm so happy today. I told you on Friday, Jesus died, but today, on Sunday, he is alive. Jesus is no longer in the grave. You want to sing with me? He rose, he rose, he rose from the grave. He rose, he rose, he rose, he rose from the grave. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Jesus is alive, Jesus is alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Jesus is alive, amen. I will celebrate, sing unto the Lord. I will sing to him my new So I am so happy, children. So what we are learning today is Jesus raises from the dead. Jesus is risen from the dead. You remember on Friday, he was put on the tomb. He only stayed there for three days. And on Sunday morning like this, people went to the tomb to look for Jesus. But they found that that big stone which had been put on the tomb was removed there was no one inside. Let me read for you, children, what the Bible says about the resurrection of Jesus. John chapter 20. I want to read for you a few verses, okay, of one lady who went to the tomb and she did not find Jesus. Her name is Mary Magdalene. Open your Bibles, read with me. John chapter 20, verse 11. Now Mary stood outside the tomb saying, crying, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been put, one at the head, another at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? 
thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabon, which means master or teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. She told them that he had said these things to her. So you see what happens? Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. She doesn't know that Jesus has resurrected. She starts crying and Jesus appears to her and says, I am alive. And she runs and tells the disciples. And actually, Jesus also appears to the disciples. If you continue reading that chapter, you will see on that evening, all the disciples were together. And the law, the doors of that house they were in was locked and Jesus appeared to them. What do you think happened when they saw Jesus and he had been dead? They were astonished. They almost fell. But Jesus said, peace be with you. I am here. I am alive. But there was one disciple who did not believe. His name was Thomas. He told Jesus, unless you show me your hands and I see where you are pierced and where that spear went through, I cannot believe. So Jesus called him, Thomas, come, come, come. Jesus showed him his hand and he told him, so put your finger here where the nail went in and where the spear went in. And Thomas says, oh, now I believe. So today we celebrate Jesus because he is risen. And what does that tell you? That also us who have believed in Jesus, when we die, we will resurrect if there are people you love and they die, Jesus will resurrect them. And one day we will be with Jesus, okay? When we believe in Jesus, we are victorious. Yes, we are able to win everything because Jesus is victorious. Death had no power. Do you remember those people who accused him? And they mocked him and they spat on him. Even that death, Jesus defeated everything. And he is alive. So we can continue to celebrate him by putting our hope in him, by trusting upon Jesus who is resurrected. He will also resurrect us. Now we know that we have life after death. And we know that we are victorious children. So even when you are sick, Jesus will heal you. When you have a problem, Jesus will solve it for you. Because everything is possible with him. Okay? We want to do our memory verse now. And our memory verse today is Matthew chapter 28, okay, children, and verse 6, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 6, and this is what the verse says, okay, it says, he is not here, he has risen, just as he said, come see where he lay. Matthew chapter 28 verse 6 says, He is not here. He has risen just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Memory verse, children, repeat after me. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 6. It says, He is not here. He has risen just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Okay? Let us pray. Let me pray for you children today. Father, I thank you so much for your word. Thank you because you are risen from the dead. And I pray for these children because they already gave their lives to you on Friday. They will continue growing in you. And that you will give them victory over troubles, victory over sicknesses. You will provide for their needs because you are risen with victory. And we can all rejoice in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a beautiful week. We will see you next Sunday. May you continue celebrating because Jesus is alive, alive, alive forevermore.
Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Jesus is alive. Amen is alive. Amen is alive. Jesus is alive. Forever is alive. Amen.